to wake up in the morning to the quiet of the cove and hear Aunt Bessie talking to herself and to hear poor Uncle John mumbling wishes to O'Neill. It made me feel like everything was fine. I was born down by the water. It's here I'm gonna stay. I've searched for all the reasons why I should go away. But I haven't got the thirst for all those modern day toys. So I'll just take my chances with those salt water joys. Following a little brook as it trickles to the shore in the autumn when the trees are flaming red. Kicking leaves that fall around me, watching sunset paint the hills. It's all I'll ever need to feel at home. This island that we cling to has been handed down with pride. By folks who fought to live here, taking hardships all in stride. So I'll compliment her beauty, hold on to my goodbyes, and I'll stay and take my chances with those salt water joys. How can I leave those mornings with the sunrise on the cove? And the gulls like flies surrounding Clayton's wharf. Platter's Island wrapped in rainbow in the evening after fog. The ocean smells are perfume to my soul. Some go to where the buildings reach to meet the clouds, where warm and gentle people turn to swarm and faceless crowds. So I'll do without their riches, glamour and the noise, and I'll stay and take my chances with those salt water toys. Some go to where the buildings reach to meet the clouds, where warm and gentle people turn to swarm and faceless crowds. So I'll do without their riches, glamour and the noise. Take my chances with those salt water joys. Good evening, and welcome to This Week in Review. Tonight in our stories, we have Alfie Commotion Day at the School, Clean Up Campaign, Liberal Candidate Calvin Parsons. Please stay tuned for these stories after this. Try Your Luck and Play TV Bingo on Wednesday, sponsored by the Lioness Club. Cards are 6 for $5 and can be bought from any Lioness member or in most stores around town. On Friday, the school held its Elfie Commotion Day. Assemblies and activities were held in the gym. <laughs>
students and teachers.
After the entertainment, they held their school Terry Fox run in the gym due to the rainy weather. Scott came by to talk about the cleanup that she is trying to organize for the town and the area. Hi there. Thank you to the BBS and Maxine for giving me the opportunity to have a chat with the people in Burgio. Um, I just wanted to uh, let people know that uh, I have been working on a job creation project with OceanNet for the past year. That employment came to an end the end of August following our big hometown celebration. And um, right now I'm on volunteer duty, um, still trying to help OceanNet with a number of their initiatives. I um, wanted to include community groups and individuals uh, who might be interested in the environment. Uh, you know, Burgio is such a beautiful place that it is a real shame that there are still people that are dumping uh, garbage overboard. There's still a lot of people that are um, throwing oil cans overboard when they're gassing up their boats. Uh, I know that because when I'm out cleaning up the beaches on the islands, uh, there are lots and lots of oil cans. I'm just uh, asking people, recreational boaters, fishers, anyone who's out on the ocean, please don't throw your garbage overboard. Same as people who live along the shoreline. I have many residents talk to me about other residents in the community who still have a practice of throwing garbage overboard. Um, there are people who have actually found garbage bags and do have who have opened them up and found out who the garbage belonged to and actually went back and dropped that garbage off on the person's doorstep. Um, it's not a good practice. I mean, here we are in 2007. Um, you know, we are teaching our kids to try to be, you know, uh, I guess environmentally aware. And, uh, and kids in school are doing such wonderful things to learn about the environment and to try to help the environment. And, um, and there's a lot of initiatives by community groups. The cadets go out and do a cleanup on an annual basis. We have little boys who are five to eight years old out cleaning up the town's garbage. And while I commend these groups for taking on these initiatives, initiatives. Uh, I'm not sure why the message is not carrying through on a day-to-day-to-day -to -day -to -day basis. And by no means do I think that children are the people who are throwing down litter all the time. I think it's all ages of people. And uh, certainly m in the most recent past, uh, I have been putting messages on the BBS looking for people to help me with some cleanups. Uh, OceanNet always has annual events where they encourage people to go out, but they do educate by action. And so whether we have a group of three people or we have a group of 30 or 300, these annual events will continue. And um, I guess the reason I'm telling you all this this evening is that uh, when I've placed notices on the BBS, I, I, I sort of don't understand why I don't even get a phone call from anyone saying, well, can I have some more information? What's this all about? Why should I go out and help you clean up? 
Um, I think it's everybody's responsibility. Uh, I think adults are our main uh, litterers these days. When I see the numbers of cigarette packs in our community uh, that are just thrown on the ground, when I see all of the dog and cat feces lying around still, even though we are trying to, uh, to clean up this problem, um, you know, something's happening that the message is not getting through. Now, there may be some of you out there that are saying, well, you know, there's people getting paid for doing those kinds of things. Why don't the people who are getting paid just clean it up? Well, you know, my job with OceanNet, part of it was to deliver programs, educating people about the different programs, and helping community groups to get organized to go out and to help clean up. And you know what? The Tidy Towns people, when they were in our community, the two judges, they were very impressed with the beauty of our community. They were very impressed with people's properties. And they also told us that there wasn't a whole lot of litter and that that wasn't a big concern of theirs. And so, of course, uh, you know, uh, as time goes on, there's more and more. And when there are no cleanups scheduled, of course, it just builds up. So every year in September, the third Friday of September, is proclaimed Ocean Net Day. And so then, until the weather uh, starts to turn a bit cold or to get bad, there are cleanups happening. And Ocean Net as a contest Anybody, if it's just a couple of people, a couple of friends or neighbors that wanted to do a little shoreline cleanup just because their house might be near a cove, or it could be a community group like the Lions or the Lioness or our Sparks or our Pathfinders, if some of these groups want to get involved, they would all be entered into the draw for $1,000. And this $1,000 is drawn at an annual Youth and the Oceans Conference. Uh, this conference is happening this year, not only in St. John's, but in Cornerbrook. Uh, Ocean Net has now got people employed throughout the province. And uh, Jennifer Lundrigan, the NEAT co coordinator who actually visited us in April during our Earth Day Festival, is organizing the conference in Cornerbrook. And uh, we are hoping that a few people from Burgio will be able to attend this conference. During the spring of this year, uh, the council, the town of Burgio's town council, had a visitor named Jason Foster come down from Cornerbrook. He works with Eastern Habitat. And he's a fellow that's interested in bird stewardship. You know, we've got a lot of birds out uh, uh, nesting on all of the islands. And uh, he's very interested in this. And he's also interested in conservation. And of course, uh, this is, these are not people who don't want you to go hunting. They want you to go hunting. They just want you to have good practices when you are hunting. And, uh, and also to monitor the birds. Uh, I do believe our ground search and rescue uh, group actually takes on a project where they go out and they build boxes and they protect the eggs uh, from the gulls and other, um, I guess, things that might hurt those uh, eggs and um, Jason Foster is interested to come down and visit us again um, just previously uh, last Sunday night I do believe Mayor Reed did mention that Jason Foster might be down here around October 11th and uh, when I spoke with Jason and asked him uh, might he be interested to come down with us to do some shoreline and island cleanups he agreed so I just want to tell you all this because I do know that there are people in Burgio that might be interested, you know, uh, to go with us out in boat. We've got three boats available. And this coming Wednesday and Thursday, the 3rd and 4th, the weather permitting, we don't get any major wind, a uh, group of us, a small group of us, will be traveling to some of the islands uh, to look at some of the bird population and also to see if there are things that we can clean up on the beaches and the shorelines. So I'm here this evening, um, this week in review. Again, like I said, thanks to Maxine for allowing me to do this uh, on a regular basis, to come and chat with you this way. Um, 
we're looking, we're still looking for people that would come out and help us. Now I know that some of you might say, well, I've got a bad back or I can't do this or, you know, it's not, it's not my responsibility. But I am asking residents um, that might be available throughout the daytime, Wednesday or Thursday, to give us a call and let us know if you're interested. Uh, you might want to just accompany Jason Foster and, and let him know your opinions about the bird populations. He's very interested in what things used to be like years ago, what they're like now, and, uh, and of course so are we. Um, the town of Burgio has a proposal to the federal government uh, to possibly have us designated as a National Marine Conservation Area. This would be a very exciting project were this to come to fruition here in Burgio. And uh, of course, partly what I'm doing as, as a town councillor, as a volunteer with Ocean Net, as a person who's an environmentally friendly person, I just think that we could present our community and our coastline in the best way possible. And that is litter free, uh, garbage free, because it's not just a little bit of litter that is like a chip bag blowing in the wind or a shopping bag. It is actual dumping. I mean, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I had a person tell me they were up very early in the morning and some people took a truckload of stuff and just dumped it over the edge of an embankment right in our area. You know, it doesn't matter what time of the day you decide to do something like that. You should be aware that there's always somebody watching. And, uh, you know, certainly we don't want to be going out into the community and giving out fines or writing letters to people saying you should be doing this, you should be doing that. I'd just like to uh, say thank you to all of those people who do come out and help. And I'm just kind of asking some other people as well to come out and help out. But if you see someone that is illegally dumping or throwing litter on the ground, then why not just try a healthy, friendly challenge to that person and say, this is not acceptable in this day and age. Anyway, it isn't all serious stuff. When we go out to clean up a beach, we do provide refreshments, we have a little bit of a lunch, and we always have door prizes. So if you'd like to come out and take part, there is a little bit of fun and enjoyment to these cleanups, and of course, we get to enjoy the great out of doors and the fresh air that we are so blessed to have in the town of Burgio and the surrounding area. So I hope to hear from you. My telephone number is 886-2069 or you can email me at june at nfld.com. I sure hope to hear from you. Even if you can't go on a cleanup and you just want to talk about this very large issue, please give me a call. Thank you and good night. Calvin Parsons, the Liberal candidate, came by the studio to talk a little about his campaign. Good evening, my name is Calvin Parsons and I'm the Liberal candidate in the upcoming election which is going to be held on Tuesday, October the 9th. I'm pleased to take this opportunity to speak with the residents of Burgio and once again ask you for your support as your candidate in this election. I'd certainly, first of all, encourage all residents to get out and vote on voting day. It's a special privilege to have the right to vote, and I would encourage everyone to do so. We've established a Liberal Aid Quarters in your search and rescue building here in town on Main Street, and if anyone needs any information whatsoever, rides to the polls and so on, or any information about the voting process, please feel free to drop by. And if you wish to volunteer and help out, we have quite a team on the go here. Uh, please feel free and we'd love to have you come out and give us the hand. I've had the privilege to represent the district of Burgio La Poyle and the pre people of Burgio in particular for the past eight and a half years. I've established a good working relationship with your council, with your fire department, with your school people, with your various uh, groups and organizations around town, church groups and fisheries groups. But I've established, particularly I do believe, a good relationship with individuals. About 70% of an MHA's work is involved dealing one-on-one -on -one with people who have problems. You may watch the House of Assembly channel and see MHA's uh, rallying and, and arguing most of the time, 
and it's, it would seem that not very much is being accomplished from time to time. And you may hear the different news media uh, and supper hour news and so on, which talks about what happened in the House on any given day. But that, in fact, is only a small portion of an MHA's job. Of course, you had to be there in the House of Assembly, and you have to play a role. You have a responsibility as an MHA to stand up, not only for your district, but also to make a contribution on the provincial scene. And I've had the, the benefit of doing that on your behalf for the last eight and a half years. But most importantly, and 70% of an MHA's work comes in dealing with individuals. It's the work that no one sees because it's only done one-on-one. -on -one. We deal with everything from employment insurance problems to Canada Pension Plan, whether it's just a simple application, the death benefits or the disability benefits. We do appeals for both on behalf of individuals who have been denied at any stage of the process. We deal with housing issues. We deal with community enhancement projects for those people who might need a few hours to make up and get their EI in any given year. We deal with student aid issues, we deal with drug coverage issues, and we deal with tax issues, and we deal with social service issues. The biggest compliment I think I've ever gotten in the last eight and a half years is that when you call my office and me because you have a problem, you always get a response. There's no such thing as being too busy to respond to anyone. Everyone gets treated equally as you should. I've held constituency clinics regularly since being elected back in 1999, and I intend to continue to do so if I'm fortunate enough to be re-elected on October the 9th. People like the personal touch. You can do a lot of work by telephone, no doubt, and emails and so on, but there are a lot of people still who like to have that face-to-face -face meeting, that one-on-one -on -one contact, and there's also privacy issues which sometimes people prefer to discuss at a constituency clinic or even if they wish in their home I'd certainly always do make myself available to do that as well. In the past while we've been very successful in the last number of years uh, particularly recently on the brush cutting project up on the highway in Burjo Highway it started not particularly pleased with the rate at which it's proceeding or the manner in which it's being done, and I'm addressing that currently with Cyril McCarthy, who is the head of Work Services and the Highways Division, but at least it's a start. It started for now, and it should continue on an ongoing basis. We should never again on the Burjo Highway, which is your lifeline to the Trans-Canada and other parts of this province, never again should we have to face the dangers that you face uh, from moose and animals and so on on that highway simply because of the brush cutting. So that's a, that will continue to be a priority. We've also been successful. Your council has been very diligent on getting a new water treatment facility. The monies have now been allotted by the provincial and the federal governments and, and uh, through ACOA, and the projects are set to go. It's going to take some time, yet some months, to get all the things tendered and the actual phases of the project uh, carried out. But at least we know now that it's being approved and it will be done. Safe drinking water and clean drinking water, of course, is a priority for any community. So I'm very pleased to see that uh, we've finally been successful in getting that major uh, project approved. The ferry terminal, which will service everyone, of course, not only the residents of Burjo, but particularly the residents of Ramy and, and uh, Grey River and Francois, is actually going to tender as we speak, and it should be completed uh, by next, uh, next June. There's also, of course, some other priorities that I have personally, and um, I know are near and dear to the hearts of many people who live in the Burjo area. First and foremost will be the upgrading that's required on the Burjo Highway, particularly the end back towards the Trans-Canada. Right now it's in a deplorable condition. Each spring you get water runoffs and so on and it's making it worse. Not so bad from Peter Strides out, but certainly from the Trans-Canada back. And I've had the assurances of Mr. McCarthy again, the superintendent, that they intend to do it over a period of four to five years. They won't get enough money in one, uh, one uh, particular budget year to do it. But the intent is you have about 80 kilometers is to get it done over a period of four or five years. And I'm pleased to see that he's on side and, and he sees that as well as his priority. So I will be pushing to see that he actually follows through on that. The other uh, priority we have, and this is not a government issue, it's a, a private business interest, and that is the cell phone coverage. It's absolutely essential. You don't want it just for convenience sake if you have a residence or a cottage along the, the Peter Strides area or anywhere on Route 480. You need it because it's a safety issue. People who travel from here out to Trans-Canada or in 
need to make sure and need to know and have the comfort of knowing that they can get in touch if they have any kind of problem or breakdown while they're in transit. That is a priority. In fact, uh, I've already arranged meetings with uh, Mr. Trevor McLeod, who was, who was the person in charge of cellular telephone service in all of Atlantic Canada. And uh, the intent is to take the petition which we've got circulated, and I'm having the meeting with him, and if we don't get any satisfaction from Mr. McLeod and get some kind of commitment that this will be done in the next year or so, I intend to take it to the CRTC and also the Public Utilities Board. They are the federal and provincial agencies which regulate communications in this country. And there's no reason whatsoever why we can't have cell phone coverage. If we can have millions of dollars being put into fiber optic cables for ca computers and so on, which is needed, no doubt about it, it was nice to have it, uh, we also certainly need to have cell phone coverage throughout the whole of this province and particularly along Route 480. So I see that as a personal major priority to have to get done and I'm sure from the people that I've talked to in the Burgio area and the Ramia area in particular that it's a priority with them as well. The other thing I sense in going door to door in this recent campaign, several people have commented to me, is that the need for more seniors housing here. We have the cottages but there's a lot more people who are getting to the point where they don't want to be in their own homes, they find it difficult to maintain their own homes, and they would like to have a cottage type setup. So I see that as certainly a, a priority as well. We're all getting older, and rather than have to see these people leave the area, they ought to have this sort of housing available to them so that they can remain in the community. Now, throughout the campaign, I've heard a scattered one, very scattered, I must say, because I have gotten an excellent reception in, throughout the whole district but there's been a scattered one who have said, well, are we better off being on the government side? Well, I'd like to rest assured and give you people some kind of comfort level and probably some facts and figures that people aren't aware of. Uh, I've been in politics now for about eight years. I've had the benefit of being in government for five, almost nine years, and I've been in opposition the past four years. While in opposition these past four years, there has not been a single, not a single solitary town council or local service district request that has been put through me and my office that we have not been successful on. It's not a case of where you sit or what your political stripe or your political color is. It's a matter of the level of preparation that you take to your work. It's how well you put your proposals together and it's about how persistent you are in pushing those proposals to see that they get done. I don't take no for an answer, whether it's brush cutting, whether it's ferry services, whether it's health care issues, or it's educational issues and student aid issues that concern my district. I stand up for the residents of Burgio La Poyle. I stand up for the residents of Burgio in particular. I speak out for the residents, and I will continue to do so. I don't make commitments. I certainly don't make promises that I can't keep. The only promise that I'll make is that whenever you have a problem, the same as you've had at any time in the last eight years, I will be there when that phone rings and you have an individual or a personal problem and you need help. I therefore respectfully request your support on October the 9th. Thank this you. This concludes our programming for tonight. Thank you for watching. Good night.